From the beginning, Michael was a man with a plan. On the Saturday afternoon of May 19, 1984, during the second round of a taping of the CBS game show Press Your Luck, Michael put that plan into action. When all was said and done, Michael walked away with over $100,000 in cash and prizes, at the time the largest one-day total ever won on a game show. This is how Michael Larson cracked the Press Your Luck game show code. Michael, a Mr. Softy ice cream truck vendor from the small town of Lebanon, Ohio, always had a tendency toward get-rich-quick schemes. He liked to watch infomercials that promised the viewer a secret to earning riches. Michael believed that game shows contained secret hacks, and that if he could just crack one, he'd win. In the fall of 1983, Michael became fascinated with Press Your Luck, a brand new daytime broadcast game show, which had premiered in September of that year. Press Your Luck was billed as a cutting-edge game show featuring flashy, technologically advanced audiovisual equipment. The game show had simple rules and a straightforward structure. Each episode began with a host asking three contestants a series of trivia questions. The opponents would buzz in. The first person to hit the buzzer would get to try to answer the question. Correct buzz-in answers earned three spins, while correct multiple-choice answers earned one spin. At the end of each round, the players would take turns spinning on the massive game board called the Big Board. The Big Board was made up of 18 backlit squares, through which constantly rotated various cash and prizes such as appliances, jewelry, and vacation packages. The Big Board also contained a pick known as a whammy. During a spin, an indicator light rapidly shuffled around the squares, lighting them up. The player would then choose when to slam down a big red button, halting the indicator. The contestant then won whatever prize was featured on the illuminated square. At the end of each spin, the player had the option to press their luck by spinning again or they could pass any remaining spins on to the next contestant. If a player landed on the show's trademark whammy, a tiny cartoon gremlin in a red suit would steal all the money they'd won up until that point, sending the hapless contestant back to zero and passing the turn on to the next player. After obsessively watching Press Your Luck, including recording episodes to VHS and pausing to study various frames, Michael discovered that the light selector moved around the big board in five patterns. He also realized that when counted clockwise, with number one being the top left corner around the board, the fourth and eighth squares always had cash and never were whammies. Furthermore, square four always contained the largest cash amount, and in the second round, contestants were awarded an additional spin if they landed on those spots. Theoretically, Michael could play Press Your Luck Big Board in the second round for as long as he wanted if he could memorize and use the patterns. So that's exactly what he set out to do. Over the next several weeks, Michael memorized every possible pattern. Then in May of 1984, Michael scraped together some money and bought a discount airline ticket to fly to Los Angeles and audition for Press Your Luck. Though Michael was charismatic and clearly loved the show, later the show's contest coordinator Bob Edwards claimed that he had a funny feeling about Michael from the start and didn't trust him. Unfortunately, Bob's decision not to cast Michael was overruled by executive producer and director Bill Carruthers. Michael was booked as a contestant on the fourth episode of a Saturday afternoon taping. His episode was meant to air Friday, June 8, 1984. The two contestants competing against Michael were Janie Littress, a dental assistant, and Ed Long, a Baptist minister. Ed was Press Your Luck's returning current champion, having won $11,516 on the previous episode. The show began like any other, with an excited live studio audience and host Peter Tamarkin engaging in some friendly banter with contestants. Michael got off to a rocky start. On the second trivia question, he pressed the buzzer prematurely, interrupting Peter. He gave an answer in that addition to being wrong was quickly revealed to be a poor answer when Peter completed asking the question. Michael finished the round, earning only three spins, while Ed earned four and Janny ten. For the game rules, since Michael had the lowest number of spins, he got to play the big board first. On Michael's first spin, he faltered and hit a whammy. But then Michael took a deep breath and focused, concentrating on the board. He hit square number four twice for $1,250 and finished the round with $2,500. However, he was still in last place. Ed and Jenny each finished the round without a whammy and won $4,080 and $4,608 respectively. In the second trivia round, Michael did slightly better and earned seven spins. Once again, since he was in third place, he got to play first at the big board. Michael carefully relied on his pattern strategy, aiming for squares number 4 and number 8. He quickly won over $10,000. He also deviated from the pattern to win prizes, landing on square number 7, won him a trip to Kauai, Hawaii, 
worth $1,636. Square number 17 was worth $700 and a spin. Square number 6 earned Michael the pick a corner, and he was given the choice of $2,250 in square 1, $2,000 in square 10, or $1,500 and a spin in square 15. He chose number 1 with $2,250. Then he won a sailboat worth $1,015 by landing on square number 7. The director began to get worried. An episode of Press Your Luck ran for 30 minute time slot and generally they would cut to commercials when a contestant hit a whammy and there was a break in play. With Michael sticking to his memorized patterns and hitting targeted squares each time he spun, he was on a roll with no break in the gameplay. The director decided to simply keep filming. As Michael continued to spin, earning his way to $40,000, up in the control booth, the show's executives took notice. Something wasn't right. Michael was unnaturally lucky. The odds of hitting a whammy were 1 in 6 spins and Michael had already spun over 10 times. Meanwhile, the studio audience was going wild, cheering Michael on each time he added more money to his winnings. Michael basked in the spotlight, grinning and raising his arms in victory. Each time he hit his desired square and racked up a win. Soon, he was at $50,000 and then $60,000. By this time, an astounded Peter was begging Michael to stop. The host's nerves were totally frazzled. Michael's opponents could only stand there, dumbstruck and confused. Behind the scenes, CBS executives were calling each other, trying to figure out a way to stop the game. The show was seriously losing money and in danger of going bankrupt. However, as Michael wasn't breaking any of the game's rules, the executives couldn't stop it. Finally, Michael stopped once he reached $102,851. By this time, he had made 40 spins on the board without hitting a whammy. For 37 of his spins, he had won cash. After announcing he was passing his remaining 4 spins, the audience gave Michael a standing ovation. Per Press Your Luck's rules, Janie received Michael's remaining 4 spins. However, since she was the leader after the first round, Ed, who was in second place and had 2 spins, got to go first. A flustered Ed immediately hit a whammy and lost the money that he had earned in the first round. Then Ed hit a square worth 5000 and a spin. On his next spin, he won yet another spin, but then he hit a second whammy with his final spin and went back to zero dollars. It was finally Janie's turn. On her first spin, she hit a whammy and lost the $4,608 she had won in the first round, but she still had six spins. The remaining three Michael passed to her and three she had earned in the second trivia portion of the game. Janie ended up earning $9,385 in cash and prizes in five total spins. Since she managed to hit squares with extra spins, she only used three of her spins. Janie passed her remaining three spins to Michael. A smart strategic move, if Michael got one whammy he'd lose his entire winnings and Janie would win the game. Unfortunately for Janie, that wasn't going to happen, since Michael was operating via knowledge and not chance. Michael was agitated to have another turn so quickly. He was tired and beginning to have a hard time concentrating. He played a few more spins. On his final spin, he won a trip to the Bahamas, valued at $2,636. Michael passed his remaining spins to Janie. She failed to earn any additional spins with him, ending the game. Michael's final cash total was $104,950. Overall, Michael had won $110,237 in cash and prizes. His winnings were equivalent to $266,000 in 2018. At CBS, a storm was brewing. Press Your Luck's producers and Michael Brockman, the head of CBS's daytime programming department, met to review the tape of Michael's wild winning streak frame by frame. They noticed that Michael immediately prematurely celebrated after many of his spins, a second or two before the big board confirmed his win. Clearly, Michael knew ahead of time what square he was going to land on. At first, CBS deemed Michael a cheater and refused to pay him his winnings. However, despite going over Michael's release form and other documents with a fine-toothed comb, the company couldn't find a clause in the game's rules with which to disqualify him. It wasn't illegal to memorize the big board's patterns. The network grudgingly paid Michael his winnings. Because he had surpassed the CBS winnings cap of $25,000, Michael was not allowed to return for the next show. CBS immediately reworked Press Your Luck's big board to use a new set of five patterns. The next month they changed the patterns again. In August of 1984, the big board was fully reprogrammed with 32 patterns, making it impossible for any future contestant to win with Michael's memory trick. Press Your Luck ended up running two more years until it was cancelled in September of 1986. Initially, CBS wasn't going to broadcast Michael's episode, but eventually relented. It was shown as a special two-part event. Part 1 aired Friday 
Friday, June 8, 1984, with the second episode airing on Monday, June 11. The episodes earned the highest ratings in Press Your Luck's history. Michael's winning episodes were then buried in the vault by CBS, who wanted to forget the whole embarrassing ordeal. Even after the Game Show Network or GSN bought syndication rights to Press Your Luck, CBS and the Game Show's producers didn't want Michael's episodes to air. Nineteen years later, on March 16, 2003, GSN was finally allowed to air the episodes as part of a two-hour documentary about Michael's controversial win. Meanwhile, Michael returned home to Lebanon with around $90,000 in winning post-taxes. He invested some of his winnings in real estate, but the opportunity didn't pan out. Michael continued to get involved with get-rich-quick schemes. In November of 1984, a local radio show held a promotion promising a $30,000 prize for matching a $1 bill serial number with a random number read out on the air. Michael withdrew his remaining winnings and $1 bills and spent days inspecting money in an attempt to win the prize. When he discovered that he didn't have the winning number, Michael redeposited some of his money, keeping the rest of the cash at home. He came to regret this decision when his house was burglarized and $50,000 in cash was stolen while Michael was at a Christmas party. The robber was never found. Later, Michael reached out to the producers of Press Your Luck to suggest that they stage a Tournament of Champions show. He boasted that he could beat the reprogrammed big board. They declined. Michael went into a downward spiral, eventually getting involved in a massive Ponzi scheme. He sold shares in a fake American Indian lottery. By the mid-1990s, he managed to defraud 20,000 investors out of $3 million. With authorities including the IRS and FBI hot on his trail, Michael fled Ohio and disappeared. His whereabouts were unknown until his death from cancer on February 16, 1999 in Apopka, Florida. Aside from fraud and getting involved in questionable schemes, Michael achieved an amazing feat. His legendary winning streak on Press Your Luck necessitated keen observation skills, dedication and confidence to perform well under pressure in front of a live audience, not to mention superior mnemonic memory skills. How good is your memory? Do you think you could have pulled off Michael's strategy? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Fastest Ways People Turned $1 into $1 million. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.